The Craig Folly Show on Deadline Detroit is made possible in part by Tech Town Detroit, Detroit's entrepreneurship hub. Tech Town Detroit is a business incubator and accelerator, helping tech startups and local businesses launch and grow. Tech Town supports businesses with co-working, office, meeting, and event space. They also connect entrepreneurs to resources and learning and networking events in Detroit. Tech Town Detroit, Detroit's entrepreneurship hub. Hey, everybody. Happy Friday. I'm Craig Folly. This is the week that was on Deadline Detroit. Glad to have you with me today. And of course, I have my regular panelists here, Alan Langle. Hello. Uh, editor here at Deadline Detroit. We Hello. appreciate you. Co-founder Hello. of Deadline Detroit. All around swell guy. Appreciate it very much. Wow. <laughs> Boy, wow. you could tell it's Friday. Yeah. Course, <laughs> occupying the coveted wow. bimbo, bimbo chair. Bimbo chair. Nancy Derringer is back with us once again. And uh, I just thank like you for to being say that camera adds 25 pounds. Does it really? So, yeah. He's, I just looked. I'm like, that's oh, what that's I was horrifying. thinking. Myself. God, I must weigh like 10 <laughs> pounds then. <laughs> See, in real life, I'm just absolutely gaunt. You You're can, a you skinny guy. Tell. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I, you know okay. what? I don't think I need to wear this scarf indoors. No, you probably don't. It so. is scarf weather out here, though. It, came, it is. It it's snowed really yesterday. Chilly. Now, it is November. So let's start out with this. It snowed yesterday about, oh, a quarter inch on, on my deck, and I posted a picture. People started freaking out yesterday. Mm-hmm. They had some snow accidents early in the morning already. Oh, yeah. Um, Always. And And people are just like... It's too early. It's too it's, early. It's, not, for it's, the no, snow. it's November, it's November in Michigan. Yeah, I it mean, does it, happen. It, it always reminds me when I was at Michigan State at Berkey Hall. I would walk in and there'd be a guy, Terry Vanderveen, and it, when it was cold Shout out, out to Terry, Terry Vanderveen <laughs> would say, "It's a chilly dog out there." Yeah. <laughs> oh, chilly dog. All man, right. man, man, man. Yeah. Must yeah. college must have been fun back in the thirties. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doing the Charleston stuff crazy, like that. Crazy <laughs> stuff. Bootleg, Chili dog. bootleg liquor. Oh, my God. Daddy-o. Right. I kid, I kid. Stuffing phone booths. That's just me being mean. I apologize. Oh, ah, right. right. A compliment and then whack. <laughs> Swallowing goldfish. Yeah. Wow. All right. Now, let's let's get to the news of the week. Um, hey, we are about to enter a completely new phase in this whole impeachment world. Yep. With a lot of these people who've done private testimony being called in for public testimony next week. Um, we're starting to get some clearer pictures with the release of these transcripts that mm-hmm. of the actual transcripts of the testimony that took place. No ellipses in there. These are the verbatim, word for word answers that these people gave, and that quid pro quo is now pretty much cemented. It it's is. A, it's it really done. is. Yeah, Sondland is like uh, he's he's like covering his ass with both hands and you know, any other hand he can find Lin- out Lin- there. That's right. <laughs> Lin- Lindsey Graham's. Well, uh, I think maybe he's in cahoots with. Uh, you know, you the know Democrats, because he, uh, he changed his testimony. I've never seen that. I've really. never seen You're that like, before. Excuse well, me. He was busted. On tape. He was busted for perjury, <laughs> yeah. and he, he went and did the smartest thing he could do at that point. You know, so. Well, do you know who Lindsey Graham is? He is the reincarnation of Earl Landgrebe. Do you know who Earl Landgrebe was? Please enlighten me. He was the Valparaiso, Indiana, uh, U.S. representative who, during the uh, delamination of the Nixon presidency, said famously, don't confuse me with the facts. (laughs) Oh, yeah, that that guy. I forgot about that guy. Well, Lindsey Graham basically said, well, I'm not going to read any of this stuff. Yeah, don't confuse him with the facts. already made up his mind. This is a guy who's a potential juror. If it mm-hmm. uh, gets to the Senate, who's right. just said, I'm right. not going to look at the right. evidence. Yeah. That's usually not the kind of instruction that's that juries get. <laughs> that's an impeachable <laughs> offense right there. Well, I mean, should impeach I, him as well. But everybody <laughs> should want to know the facts. Of course. And if it's going to be brought to your attention, maybe it behooves you to actually read up just a little bit. Now, yeah. we don't want to follow the president's example. No. Reading is fundamental, people. <laughs> well, it's really important that we all learn matter. how to do the, this. The message is, I don't care what he did. I am not impeaching him. Exactly. So it doesn't matter. I'm voting Won't remove uh, him. not to impeach regardless, and that's that's the message he's sending. Mm-hmm. Which, Absolutely. All right. So well, that's who he is, you know? It, that's it, our guy. So, and so, it's like all these guys are so afraid of Trump. It's like ye- yesterday, you know, the announcement that uh, Jeff Sessions is going to run for Senate in Alabama, and he runs a, he runs a commercial, and he says, well, I just want to say – I didn't write a tell-all book, and you know I think the president's just doing fine. Well, meanwhile, you know Trump has privately said, "I'm going to bust your ass if you, you know, run." He goes, "I am just going to trash you." Well, hey, speaking of testimony, please, Mr. President, don't trash please me. Please don't hurt me. John Bolton. Speaking of people who have, are writing tell-all books, John Bolton is getting ready to write a book. We know oh, this. Yeah. He's yeah. already got a the I'm mustache. Sure he's already got a deal. Yeah, right. Um, and the thing is, he's trying to postpone his testimony. I guarantee you he's rushing to get that thing ghostwritten as fast as possible because oh, you don't want to yes. give away all the good stuff yeah. for free. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and so I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of tell-all books coming out. I think there will. Um, Anonymous, the 
Washington Post got a copy of this book by Anonymous. Mm -hmm. A a Warning is the name of this book. Uh, Uh, I want to know your thoughts on this because part of me is saying, well, yes, it's somewhat courageous to go out there and, and, uh, you know, tell what's going on in the White House. But part of me is also like, you know what? If you're so worried about it, maybe you should re- maybe you should resign no. from your position. I, I, what do you I think? Have, I have absolutely lost all my sympathy for anyone who is still working in that White House. And you know, I I read the the two reviews last night, the Times and the Post, and it sounds like it's nothing that we don't already know. The president is an infant. The president is out of control. He's ignorant. He's impetuous. He's venal. He's greedy. He's greedy. Add all the bad adjectives. That's what the president is. So it's like, why are you still there? And why? Aren't you, and, and if it's that bad, you have an obligation to your country to stand up, use your own name, bring as many people on board as you can, and and you know take some responsibility. And they won't do it. I, They'll never do it. I'm waiting for Melania's book. <laughs> I mean, I think that'll be the greatest book. I mean, they can't like each other. I mean, she's got oh, a she bully campaign. <laughs> he he demonizes immigrants. I mean, they must just go at it but I, I i have mixed feelings i think in some ways it's great i think it's so funny i mean it's driving the guy crazy like i'm sure yeah. he's got people investigating on this i mean in the same way that he had people i'm sure trying to unearth the name of the uh, whistleblower which he eventually did uh so i i have mixed i mean the right thing would do would obviously be to quit come forward but i think it's funny I, I, I find some humor in, in the whole process. Some very so. dark humor. Certainly. Dark humor. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and, and I mean, this just adds to the president's paranoia, though. He's like, you mm-hmm. know, I mean, if there's a guy who's probably got an enemies list, it's. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. <laughs> it's it's yeah. Donald Trump, yeah. right? I you know. know. You talk about that. I mean, I wonder if he walks around looking at everybody every day going, is that the one? Is that the one? <laughs> Who is it? Which one of you bastards is the one well, that just Well, right. a lot of people. Pompe- Pompeo. Uh, was you know vice president was was a suspect nikki haley was a suspect it's november uh, 8th yes yeah well, are you willing to make a prediction on november 8th this because we know we're going to find out who this person is eventually yeah who are, are you willing to make a prediction no okay i'm i'm, I'm putting not. my i'm putting my number 22 bet on kellyanne conway and i'm putting my red bet on a woman. Well, then she's doing a really, really good job of I know. making sure that nobody I, I, thinks it's her. And I know I'm a little, I'm a little wobbly on there, but they haven't called no more bets yet, so I'm still, you know, the, I, the I, I, still I going had around. a feeling you were going to well, go there. Did you yeah. see Kellyanne Conway? I guess after during an interview during the campaign with uh, on Morning Joe or whatever. Yeah. Afterwards, she was basically like saying what a horrible guy Donald right. Trump was, and oh my God, this won't you know go on much longer. Uh, it's possible. I mean, her and her husband. I mean, I know George, George Conway. I mean, it's just it's it's crazy that he that she works so closely with Trump. Uh, I, I I don't think it's her because I don't find her that heroic. Okay. I find her. Think about it she's, though. She's it, definitely this a is a senior staffer, right? Yeah. Now it didn't say cabinet appointment or anything like that. No. But said senior, senior staffer. staffer. How many people are still around from the time that original? Right. That original thing came out the, in the in the Washington Post, and now the book. That's right. been, been about a year, right? Uh, yeah, it was a year last summer. So it's who's like, it's still a, around? It's a, churn, a churn I mean, over there. It's a churn over fast. there, so it's kind of like I have the a feeling pool of, of possible Every time candidates. somebody leaves, I, it gets a little smaller. The news is tightening. I have a feeling it's like a deputy of somebody, some, you know, higher Somebody up. that we don't know. Like the deputy a state, name, a name from the State Department. The yeah, somebody yeah, who's possible. able to slide, who's not meeting with the president every day. Yeah. the president can kind of give that Larry David look of... yeah. Like that, you know. <laughs> but I'm still thinking a woman. I don't know why. There's some. Yeah. There was something about the story about the. It's your dad walking around without pants on that just sounded like a woman. I don't know. <laughs> it might be that that actually happened in my family, but you know. <laughs> well, but okay. Let's let's move back to this, this impeachment thing for just a second because I was reading a story in the Post this morning that I thought was quite fascinating, and that the Democrats may be shifting their strat or excuse me, the Republicans may be shifting their defense strategy once again to suggest that Rudy Giuliani and maybe Sondland and Mick Mulvaney were not operating on behalf of the president, but were themselves the ones that had concocted this scheme <laughs> to protect the president. And they're going to go down this road with all these things. Oh, yeah. my God. You know, did the president specifically instruct you to do I'm, this? I'm imagining like a... <laughs> An, an open, open so they're top getting ready bus, to right yeah, yeah. and and these guys are like start throwing them out front. Their, it's like they're gonna throw them out what is the what was the, the image from russian literature it was the uh, the troika yeah. you know with the horses and the and the wolves are like running behind the troika and they're just throwing people out the back hoping it slows the wolves down it's it's this gonna get really, interesting oh though God, um, it's awful. and to this see is... to see who they're willing to sacrifice at the altar of donald trump yep uh, because they're gonna try that because like i said they don't 
their first defense was, well, there was no quid pro quo. Then they were like, well, there was a quid pro quo, but it's not a crime. It's not a big deal. Everybody does quid Everybody pro quo. does that. And when they say, actually, no, they don't. This is really <laughs> unusual. And like, well, maybe it wasn't him that told them to do it. And I'm will- <laughs> I'm not sure that any of these people is willing to go down like that. Well, I, 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 I think there's going to be a lot of people saying, oh, hell no, it's not going to be me. <laughs> I, I think... I mean, I, I think the strategy they're using, it, which has appeared to work uh, in in the past, is that normalizing Trump's behavior right. to the point where I mean, if just we more had, locker room if, talk. Yeah, yeah, if we had seen a president talk this way or act this way, you know, previously it would be outrageous. But we've become so used to it. The bar is like he's no longer presidential in, in what we think of as presidential anymore uh you know i used to tell tell people jokingly sometimes you see someone in a never suit presidential. and you say wow you look presidential and now that's an insult yeah <laughs> it really is it really is well interestingly enough though i mean the democrats are still quite worried about this guy as, as a potential and his potential to get reelected um we're hearing lots of discussions about electability elizabeth warren getting ripped at because of course she's leading and Medicare for all being used as a cudgel against her, obviously, right now. People mm-hmm. saying that this plan isn't realistic. You know, God forbid a politician actually outline how they would pay for something. Right. She mm-hmm. actually did that and is getting penalized for it right now. Right. But there's of a course. lot of concern about who's going to win, which is now why Michael Bloomberg is potentially injecting himself into the race. <sighs> what a- is he a Republican? Is he a Democrat? Is he an independent? I mean, he's a former he's mayor everything. with a ton of cash. He's been all. So, I mean, he can he can match the Republicans dollar for dollar on this campaign, which... Everybody likes a self-funded candidate, but is he adding anything to the race at this point in time? You know, I'd, I'd say yes. I, I'd say. Uh, I mean, he let the he well, let the herd I thin out. Say, I smart say to wait until the herd thins itself. I say that because I think people are, are worried about uh, the selection. I mean, you know, look, Elizabeth Warren. You're not going to find a smarter candidate, uh, but you know, it, does she appeal to to a broader, broad enough? audience i don't know i mean in the end i I know a lot of democrats are going to be like whoever is running as a democrat i'm going to vote for and that's basically a lot of the mentality there but you know the independents or whatever who who may just say i don't know i I think bloomberg is obviously one of the more moderates he's like he's like a a more together joe biden kind of well and joe biden's not exactly doing real well right now right and joe joe's getting killed i mean look this whole this whole ukrainian thing is not is not helping because in the end his son should never have taken the job. Yeah, of course. Not. It looks it looks sleazy, but and 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 Joe is just kind of stumbling through at times. I mean, he's you know I, I think he's still a likable guy, and he's got he's actually got a lot of strong support in the African American community, who I think people you know like the idea that he helped Obama. Well, Dem- uh, Democrats are absolutely freaking out that Pete Buttigieg is doing as well in Iowa as he is. He mm-hmm. had a strong third place in that poll, only a couple of points behind. And so then we like, could end up having the but front runner coming in fourth place in Iowa. Exactly. Right. And yeah. but the thing is, now they're saying that Pete Buttigieg couldn't cannot win in South Carolina because African Americans, who uh, you know, there's a great right. column by Jonathan Capehart in the, in the Post today talking about the myth behind black voters not being willing to support somebody who might be gay, oh. and saying so he can't win since 60 percent of the electorate in South Carolina is African American. You need your most reliable voters to to be over the top, and I, I don't know. I mean. Joe Biden will do well in South I, He might. Before but, we move on from, from yeah. uh, Michael But the Democrats Bloomberg, are doing no. their best to eat their own right now. Yes, they really are. It's the usual circular firing squad. But I just have to say, if, if your takeaway from the last five years is, hey, I got a lot of money. I'm a rich guy. I could be president of the United States. You have learned the wrong damn lesson. I mean, this is like... Because rich New Yorkers have worked out so well. Well, yeah. I, exactly. well I think, yeah. I mean, I think clearly business people who always say, oh, you know, we need... Everyone says, oh, we need a business person, a person who knows finance and stuff like that. It's not the same in government, particularly at the federal level. It's not about balancing the budget. I mean, we're, we're operating at a deficit. It's like Obama, you know, when he came in, he needed stimulus money. And... He needed to create right. a greater debt right. to to stimulate the economy, and the Republicans fought him tooth and nail on that, and finally let him, you know, do some stimulus money, but not as much as he should have. But I think, you know, we see it with Rick Snyder, mm-hmm. you know, another business guy who was right. like inept really as a politician. I mean, I think his heart they was generally. They are two generally, different jobs, and they require two different when skill sets. Rick Snyder this was calling the voters BS. customers. Oh, yeah. the, I, like, oh. It's like the Walmart mentality. Yeah, you're a, you know, 
It, it's it's right. ridiculous. And so here we have Donald Trump, and everyone thought, oh, Donald Trump, he knows what he's doing. But everyone says, hey, look at the you know look at the stock market. Look at look at my four hundred one k. But look at the rest of the world. Yeah. Look at the country. Look at the way you know. And, really, in this this election is really about about preserving the Constitution, whether we want to see the Constitution further erode, whether we want to see checks and balances further erode. Uh, Alan, I would vote for you over White Wow, Cooper. thank you. Wow, I've got one vote. That's a start. Hey, I, I, One step at a time. Hey, Bl- Bloomberg's been throwing some cash around in Detroit. I mean, I know. you know, so He's that's good not friends a bad... with the mayor. And yeah, keep doing I that know. stuff. That's yeah. fine, Mr. Bloomberg. That's you want to make your mark in America? Put some right. of that money to well, work in cities that we thing. need. I, like, I, I don't why? have a problem with that, but don't get in there now. Was, I mean, it, was it Samantha B who had that had that great piece a few months ago, like, run for the Senate? Yeah. I mean, all these people who think they want to be president, it's like, we, we need Senate. Senators too. We need great right. representatives. It's right. like it, it's not all about having the top job. In fact, in in many ways, it's not about having the top job. You know, but it's interesting. What about the, the ego, though, to even run oh for that job? Like I mean, bet, it, I mean, Beto O'Rourke is a perfect example. He should have been running for the Senate from Texas instead of like wasting all this money. Right. You know, appearing on the cover of Vanity Fair. You know, flexing his no. Amy Klobuchar. <laughs> yeah, it's oh, interesting. Yeah. I mean, I think the, the word of how she's treated her help and stuff like that, I, I don't know if she can, it, maybe she can get over that, that stain I've worked there. for Amy Klobuchar's before in the past. Yeah. You know. I, I met her at a party. She was very, in D.C., she was very nice, but, you she's, know, when, I when mean, you read the stories. I mean, she's a non-entity. I mean, you know, yeah. she's, what is she pulling at now, like 0.7%? Is yeah, but that? you I mean, know what? You know, it's, I mean, she's it's, down there with Marianne early. Williamson and all the rest of yeah, them. But it's, Tulsi Gabbard, for God's sake. But it's <laughs> early. When you end up, end up as a front runner early on, it's a danger, and I, and I think Joe Biden is seeing that. Joe Biden, it's a, it's a liability to be a front runner so early on in the race. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, well, aiming at you. We, we can't get off Washington yet because the other big story that came out yesterday, um, this one came out of New York, actually, is that the Trump Foundation has to pay, <laughs> Donald Trump has to pay $2 million of his own money. Oh, my God. I don't think he has to, it. To, <laughs> As restitution for running basically what the prosecution called a sham charity. Right. They they collected money and they basically used it for campaign purposes, other things. Uh, and a they, portrait. The portrait. Well, I wanted to get to that. That was my favorite line in the first story that I was reading about this yesterday when it first came out. They said, his lawyer said, well, the only reason that they kept the portrait for themselves is because they were the only ones who bid on it at the auction. <laughs> They started the bidding at ten thousand dollars, and everybody else is like, ah, "Why the hell would I, I want that? I'd rather have a portrait of Kramer. I mean, I'd rather have a velvet Elvis. I mean, come on now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's great. Dogs playing dollars poker on a on a, pa- on a bad painting of Donald Trump in well, tennis yeah, clothes. Yeah, t- one of those tennis sweaters. Oh like God. it's just like a scene from Trading Places. There, and she dropped the ball. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's such a bad picture, and I'm just looking at it. And now, of course, it hangs at Doral or one of his it's properties in, one of in his Florida. Clubs, yeah. But that was the best line. Next year. His Nobody Newsweek else bid on his fake Newsweek cover. I'm serious. They're like, you know, I got ten thousand. We have a ten thousand dollar bid. Do we have ten five? I was like, put your paddle down, honey. Put your paddle down. <laughs> don't don't even sneeze. I know. <laughs> I was like, yeah, like, you. Exactly. Don't don't scratch your nose no matter right. what you that's do. That's exactly right. So <laughs> so anyway, I just thought that was kind $2 of two million dollars. That's that's like uh, that's a pittance. But, well, he's know. like, I'm never going to settle this case. Well, maybe you should have settled yeah. that case. Oh, he says that all the time. He says I've never settled a lawsuit. He settles them constantly. Yeah. He settled well, yeah, them for Trump, all his life. Trump University. What was, oh yeah, there was a Trump University, the uh, you know Trump stakes. But so, that was anyway. that was kind of a okay. funny story yesterday. Yes, very funny. Uh, let's move closer to home, shall we? Okay. Um, an institution that I used to work for is having a very very bad couple of weeks. Wayne State University ah. and the president Roy Wilson. Just again, full disclosure, I reported to his chief of staff was my direct report at Wayne State. So you know I have to I have to put put that out there. Right. Um, I had a good relationship with him. Uh, but clearly he's got some problems with half the board. Right. Four board members voted when one guy was absent to see if they could get him fired from the job. Right. Now, Kim Trent, who, of course, is chair of the board right now, said, no, we didn't actually have a real session going on. It but was an informational discussion or something they called it. Yeah, on on right. this tuition plan that right. they announced a couple of weeks ago. It was supposed to be an informational meeting, uh, getting faculty there, presenting them the information about it. So it wasn't technically a board meeting, and therefore the vote was improper. Mm-hmm. Now, whether or not you know, this gets upheld in some way, and, and apparently Attorney General Nessel's going to look at this. They said they'll look at it. It doesn't mm-hmm. mean they're going right. to officially weigh in or not. 
But this is not good for the university. No. Uh, it makes them look completely dysfunctional. Right. Uh, you've had this brewing for a couple of years now. I mean, there's been a lot of animosity, a 4-4 split on that board. Mm -hmm. And the president's sort of caught in the middle. The thing is, if they think this makes them, you know, okay, say you fire Roy Wilson. Say that this gets upheld. Who's going to want to come here? With uh, well, this dysfunctional board, who are they going to exactly. get? Yeah, exactly. I mean, they've got problems with the DMC right now, as we found out this morning, with mm -hmm. their accreditation on their neurology program, their neurosurgery program. So they lost their accreditation on that. They have to get that back, appeal it. Uh, they look like the Detroit City Council right now, basically. They, they do. In, in, and in some of its worst periods. A absolutely. I mean, yeah, I'm su better surprised nobody right called now. them Shrek yet. I mean, that's yeah. it's yeah. like exactly. right. we're getting close to it. But... Wayne State is such an important part of the community in terms of investment, not only just yeah. in, in the academic side of things, but with their relationships with the medical centers, with their relationships uh, with the city in terms of construction and building and all these things that are happening. It all matters. They're make a vital make resource. A date. Yeah. Make your date. <laughs> <laughs> they are a vital resource in the community and they and they you know, this kind of this kind of shenanigans on the board really makes them look bad and it's terrible. I mean, especially coming like a you know, two weeks now after the this innovation center, the University of Michigan, is expanding its footprint into Detroit, and right. Wayne State's sitting there going, "What are we chopped liver?" And it's right. apparently they and are it, chopped liver. I mean, look, Wayne State is clearly the biggest university in in, in the city, been around for a long time, and it went through the struggle where at some point people didn't want to come down to Detroit, and they were opening up satellite campuses yep. in Oakland County, and now they're they're you know deservedly riding the wave. Yep. Uh, of Detroit, uh, you know, we're Detroit, and 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 and, and really underrated on, on the branding. I mean, yeah, Wayne's I, a great. It's a it's a great school. I went there for two years before I went to Michigan State. Yeah, um, it had a, a great journalism department, and um, I was an know. adjunct there for a couple of terms, and yeah. I was I was amazed at the quality of the student body there and and the other teachers, and it was wonderful. But so. the the board is. Not looking good. No, uh, these are some shenanigans. And one of the things, one of the one of the board members who voted to remove Roy Wilson from his job, actually called up Tony Holt, who's the police chief at Wayne State University, and said, "Deny him access to the building as of Tuesday at midnight." And Tony Holt's just like, "I don't think so. I don't think so. No, <laughs> I'm not, not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Exactly. I don't so, take orders from you. Uh, yeah, and it's just, and if they did take the vote, because this meeting was taking place uh, apparently. Um, behind closed doors, right. if they did take the vote, that would be a violation of the Open Meetings Act. Yes. So I mean, that's why it wasn't a real meeting. Yeah. I mean, all of this stuff, this, all this procedural uh, you know, quibbling is boils down to the fact that it was not a board meeting, and you can't just do that. So. You know, it's interesting. Universities, I think people think of, oh my gosh, I'll go to a university, I'll teach, whatever, everything is going to be so, you know, copacetic, so mellow. And, you know, universities are so known for their internal politics, even, you know, academically oh, yeah. and, and at the administrative level. Yeah. Uh, it's Well, Dan Howes in the Detroit News wrote a pretty good column about the dysfunction of the boards at Michigan State and Wayne State as a, as a cautionary tale, saying mm -hmm. maybe this isn't, shouldn't be like an elected seat because well, it people... You run for these boards to see if you've got statewide appeal. Right. And that builds up your statewide name recognition. Because these are statewide positions that you, at those right. three research universities. Other schools don't have this sort of issue. No. Um, I was stunned when I moved to Michigan and was asked to, like, vote on the Wayne State Board of Governors. I'm like, mm. I know nothing about this. Same time, I mean, I understand why you don't necessarily want to give that power to the governor. Yeah. But it should be something that, you know... There, are, there could be a higher ed commission or yeah, something exactly. like that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it that, just doesn't... It, that vets people that actually have some experience in academia and understand these sorts of things. That right. would be kind of nice. Exactly. And and you're right to, I mean, to, to lump this in with MSU because MSU has got big problems. And when somebody... We talked about this last week, didn't we? When somebody with as much, you know, personal integrity and, and a gold-plated reputation as Nancy Schlichting says, I can't work with you people, then you got a huge problem. But, you know... Well, oh, well. Sparty uh, on. Another huh. interesting thing here. Um, Rashida Tlaib, of course, member of Congress from the city of Detroit, yep. much loved by the Republican Party, <laughs> part of the squad. the squad. She is now pushing for uh, Congress to probe the tax break that Dan Gilbert qualified for the opportunity, the opportunity zone stuff, yeah. which we have a column. Uh, Charlie LeDuff did a column about that for Deadline Detroit today uh, that is there right now that you can read. Just get a little background for you. Uh, but this thing might not go away anytime soon. I, I have a feeling this could be one of those things where they start taking a look at it and realizing that, okay, some of these things may be abused. Uh, uh -huh. the, the, the developers have been gaming the system forever. I mean, we've seen it with well, the Illiches, uh, with public monies, and, and at, somehow at Amazon the big guys, and every other major corporation that has right. tried to open something finds a way but to get these breaks. A, but this right. was a, a break that was specifically for 
uh, lower income areas. And to have these things being utilized on the Woodward Avenue corridor downtown for the Hudson's is, for the you know for the Hudson's beach. building is ridiculous. So yeah. I I don't disagree, but there's enough wiggle room in these statutes to make it happen. Well, so I, I mean, I believe you. I remember I when we you, had the right. when they had the Renaissance zones for a while, and then there mm-hmm. was uh, the Promise zones and all this yeah, stuff. All, yeah. But they all had specific boundaries Mm -hmm. Uh, back in the Archer administration that was during the Clinton presidency there were specific boundaries where you'd get these tax breaks the opportunity zones not really like that they were Mm -hmm. kind of more nebulous and sort of it's basically whatever you deem to be an opportunity zone right you can kind of get that Amazing well, I mean, that a that a law passed under the Trump administration would have that much gray area for uh, wealthy developers well, to uh, to shocked. manipulate. I'm shocked. I'm totally shocked. I'm totally shocked. Yeah. I mean, look, Gilbert has played. You know, he's got he's got dug in. I'm sure. You know, I mean, they refer to him sometimes as the quasi mayor, and he's he's donated he donated seven hundred fifty thousand dollars to the Trump inauguration. Even though I don't think he was initially a Trump supporter, he was. Uh, he, supporting he held Chris some Christie. fundraisers for him. Yeah. Well, he he opened the doors and he he tried to distance himself a little bit. I think he was worried, but right. he was a backer of Chris Christie during the primaries, and but he's he knows how to play it. He was in the uh, he was in the White House one day somehow walking around while they were doing an awards for one of the teams, one of the yeah. world champion teams, and. He just happens to walk by, and Trump's like, "Hey, Dan Gilbert, come on over here. You guys know who he is." And it's like, "What the? What is he doing? Walking? Around? Who gets to walk around the White House like that?" Yeah, exactly. Just, just well, hanging out. Well, at least out. he didn't do what Gordon Sunland did, which was uh, parlay that uh, that that contribution to the inauguration into a uh, an ambassadorship. An ambassadorship, because then he might be in really deep. Right. Uh, he very right well now. could be. Um, yeah. All right. So what else do? We, oh, I had to get into. Oh, I thought this was interesting. Um, now I. You guys have Netflix? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, yes, yes. So you basically can get Netflix on any machine you want. Right. And apparently they're losing something like $6.6 billion in revenue a year between Netflix and some of the other subscription services on people who share passwords. Oh. And now okay. all these companies are saying they're going to crack down on what they call password cheats. Okay. There was a really good story about this in the Detroit News. I thought that was Everybody allowed. Everybody has the I thought, same. I it's, it's, could, not, oh. it's not supposed to be. So they're thought, talking about ways to get around it. I thought you could have up to five. It. Well, yeah, you should get so many sign-ons for a family, for instance. You know, I mean, my daughter uses ours. She lives in California now, so hey, well, you know. there you yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I, I mean, like they're going to send you a code on your phone in the middle of a program, and you have to thumb it in, oh. or else you won't be able to, to watch it. I mean, they're talking about doing that kind of stuff. Oh, but that's going to be how really far annoying. can they go? Because there was a there was a quote in this article that I thought was pretty good. And this is from a guy named Mike McCormack, who's an analyst at Guggenheim Securities, who's taking a look at how much money they're losing, and how they do this. And mm-hmm. they also did the sampling of the people about mm-hmm. how they would feel about this thing. And here's the quote. If you ask any cohort of young people if they will ever pay for Netflix or video services, the answer is unequivocally no. <laughs> it <laughs> is, doesn't bode true. well for, yeah. for paid journalism, uh, paid television. Well, it's... How journalism well, has gotten screwed by starting out with free internet, right? For, you know. Part part of it also is, I mean, it, there are kids with good jobs, but there are an awful lot of kids without good jobs. And I mean, you know, I I, I was telling a friend of mine who's got a young adult daughter that it's like, you know, they've really left the nest when they're paying for their own cell phone and their own Netflix subscription. So uh, um, whether they will do that or not, I don't know. So benefits are no longer the uh, the standard. <laughs> <laughs> it used to be you knew they were on their own when they had benefits. <laughs> That's yeah, my benefits. dad used to that's say. That's a big one, yeah. Bennies, are, that's important, too. But. Yeah, I remember, yeah, my father said that one day. He came home and he was in really good mood. And he opens up a really good bottle of wine, and I was over there for dinner. I'm like, why are you so happy? He's like, because all my children now have benefits. My little <laughs> sister got a teaching job out in Boston at the time. And he was just like, wow, I have okay. Done my, I, my work here is done. It's one of those things I didn't really think about at the time, but it was, uh, but it was kind of interesting. Yeah, exactly. So um, last thing I want to get to, a uh, checker bar. Um, yeah. Obviously, uh, had a, something similar happen to them recently uh, that uh, Founders Brewery has been going through. Yeah. And they handled it quite a bit differently than Founders did. I wonder how they got the idea that it should be handled differently. I, well, <laughs> if they're, they're watching the bad PR that has happened, uh, they basically said, they did an investigation. We found out the guy was a jerk. Yeah. He said some bad things, and not just to that one person. He was a He, he was, was a He was, he was an equal jerk. opportunity he, jerk. Yeah, exactly. Equal um, opportunity jerk. But they're like, so we fired this guy. Oh, and by the way, we're going to host a meeting to talk about, you know, perceptions of people in the city about whether or not restaurants downtown are really for everybody. What do we do to increase our outreach and our understanding of what might be troubling people? Mm-hmm. Nice step. Yeah. Good move. Right. Fire the offending party. Right. And then figure out a way to make it better. Yeah. 
I think that's imagine. That's, yeah, exactly. And 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 now Founders is in the position of I, I saw the terms of this uh, it's reopening. It's amazing. They're going to be like they're not reopening until January. They're going to be devoting, I, I think, contributing all of their profits, not you know receipts, but profits yep. from the Detroit um, tap room to for like two years, three yep. years, something like that. Twenty twenty two profits. Yep. Unbelievable. I mean, wow. that's like, and they're paying all those and employees, then, and they had until to settle, they reopen. They had to settle with Tracy Evans. Yeah. So I mean, all of this. Yay, Tracy. Exactly. Well, I mean, but you, you got to about... remember, San Miguel Brewing, which is a huge brewing company, just bought out a big chunk of Founders. That was a big investment for them. Yeah. One of the most successful microbrew ba- brands in America. I guarantee you, there's a little bit of help coming from them. And they're oh, saying, I'm sure. This is. is what you're gonna do. Yeah. Their team got involved right. and said, sure. "We are not gonna let you take us down." Yeah, and exactly. So, That's. I mean, in fact, there. If you were a conspiracy theorist, you could almost say to yourself that the bad handling of this at the beginning was due to the fact that they no longer had as much skin in the game. You know, true. hey, we sold ninety percent of this business to uh, right. <laughs> to a corporation. All right. Yeah. <laughs> two two more things I want to get to. Um, neither of them really good. Uh, this De La Salle. High school oh hazing scandal is getting uh, getting pretty ugly. Yeah, uh, they forfeited a playoff game um, mm-hmm. because they found out about this. And at first, they said, "Well, it's not that big a deal." Then they came out and said, "Actually, this might be a little more pervasive than we thought." And it involves uh, a broomstick. A broomstick. Yeah, or threats of it. They don't know if there was any right. actual. They they, have, mm-hmm. they came out and said clearly there there was no penetration. Yeah, We've determined um, that there ooh, was boy, no that's, penetration. That's good to know. But the fact that you've got football players threatening other football players, even if it's an, an intimidation tactic. What's the point of that? Does that bring people closer together? See, this is Does that my... add to the bonding of the team? That's I play team. sports for That's fun. That's a team I don't yeah. want to play for. This is exactly. The, <laughs> this is the question that has come up time and again with these hazing incidents, whether it's sports, a fraternity, a sorority, whatever. What is the point? What is the point? I mean, I get that it's that it uh, is supposed to be a bonding thing, even though I don't think it is a bonding thing. But <sighs> the idea that I think what it is is I went through it, so therefore you have to too. And Bond, it's like bonding, that is one of the ugliest impulses in to, the human nature. To me, the idea of, of bonding is like, hey, you know, some friends go out, whatever, you have a beer or a drink or something. It's not yeah. like, hey, why don't you come over? I'm going to take a broomstick and <laughs> shove it up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do some bonding. That's not my, I, I don't know. <laughs> Call me old fashioned. <laughs> oh. uh, yeah, I, you know, I, last time we heard about that was, of course, in a New York jail. Yeah, several years exactly. ago but yeah. i mean you know I, I don't i don't get it i don't understand it uh-huh. but um maybe that's why i never played organized sports i played in like the after school softball league the intramural softball league stuff yes. like that um because I, one to... i don't want a coach yelling at me and two i certainly don't need some a-hole senior right. threatening me with a broomstick exactly no the i thought joe lapointe's uh column yesterday in deadline was pretty good on that subject yeah, and you know he talked about some of the you know he said the first time he saw this it was what they shaved some guy right yeah they shaved every his whole body and you know he he treated it as oh what a fun joke you know it's an initiation into the red wings this is back when they were playing at olympia stadium yeah and um <clears throat> he said that uh over time, his thinking began to evolve on this. And, you know, I can only hope that the rest of us, and coaches and players in particular, have their thinking well, evolving. You, you wonder it, the whole psychology behind, I mean, the denigrating of another human being in, in such Well, a- an awful lot of it is just man, hands-on, misery to man. It's like, I went through it, you'll go through it. And so at yeah. some point, somebody has to say, I went through it, and I don't want anybody else to go through it. It right, stops here. Right. But well, it never does. I look, mean, it's like how abuse is handed down. It, it, look, we keep looking at fraternities. They keep getting busted for I hazing know. incidents all the time, even mm-hmm. though the universities are cracking down, kicking them off campus when this stuff happens. They're still doing it. I know. Um, and it's, it's the still mean a part kids. of life. Yeah, yeah it is. And this is, and they wonder why people think less of them. The mean kids become president. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, last last story. The final two Kmarts in Michigan are slated to close. That's really? The last two. I know. Well, I'm I'm not shocked either, but at the same time, this you is... said Shonda, not shocked. Oh, this is end of an era. I mean, Kmart, it used to be Kresge's, then they switched to Kmart. Kmart, Kmart um, screwed up. I mean, Kmart used to be the store. I mean, it was a discount store. You knew if you went to Kmart... You're you coming out of there with some tidy whiteies and a Slurpee. Well, you were getting something cheap. You were getting it for cheaper yeah. than you could get it elsewhere. It was almost really considered a, a wholesale store. And then they decided to sell... All their, you know, not All so good what? quality stuff at higher prices, and Target. <laughs> That's always a bad. Tar- Target came along, and Ate Target was selling and cheap, Walmart too. Walmart cheap, killed. Yeah, 
in Walmart, and they came along. And we're selling cheaply and selling better products. Target, and like Target, took it up the quality and the shopping experience up a little bit. And the price you know? was still very right. affordable. Yeah, it and, was. And that was that it was, was the kind thing. Of, t- Target was like the yuppies Kmart. Well, it was like t- you know, t- it, it was the queue line versus the bus. One actually exactly. works really, really well. <laughs> The other one not so well, but it seems cooler. Yeah. So therefore, <laughs> therefore I'm going to shop that, there. but I won't take that. Yeah. <laughs> As Dennis, Dennis Miller used to say, yeah, one of his skits, he says, you know, there's a place, some department store that's giving away. You get three suits for one. You know, pay for <laughs> one, and he goes, well, three of three of of shit is still shit. <laughs> And with that, and with that, we e, need to wrap up <laughs> we the week the that was. E on the podcast. Uh, that should not be the apostrophe in the end of the show, or the uh, exclamation point at the end of the show, but um, close enough. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, by the way, Michael Lucido has been engineering our broadcast. He is also the host of this week's Zip. Check it Yay. out on Deadline TV at DeadlineDetroit.com. He does a very nice job in front of the camera instead of behind it, as he usually is. So he was kind of dying to, to get out there. Check out Don't all let your, of his too. Of, uh, Don't right. let your head get too big, my friend, because we need you back there still but we'll bring you out every once in a while and let let you see the sunlight uh thanks to michael for his help in engineering the broadcast uh thank you nancy we always appreciate nancy for being here here. alan langle thank you very much i'm craig thanks for all of you for watching this also thanks to tech town and to samaritas for sponsoring this program i appreciate that very very much sponsors and uh, with that i will say goodbye and alan will say drive home safely (laughs) have a great weekend everybody Hey, the Craig Folly Show on Deadline Detroit is made possible by Samaritas, which is the state's largest private foster care and adoption agency. But they do a heck of a lot more than that. They've been serving homeless families, persons with disabilities, abused and trafficked women. They're also one of the largest resettlement agencies in the state. They provide market rate and affordable housing for seniors and HUD housing for families. And they also have skilled nursing, memory care and rehab communities in Grand Rapids, Cadillac and Saginaw. Samaritas. Thanks for their support. Great organization doing great stuff all around the state.